This is a U.S. Army lightweight individual survival kit. It was also known as the Leg Holster Survival Kit. It was developed by the U.S. Army and Rocket Jet Engineering Corporation and Natick Labs produced this olive drab green nylon leg holster. Only 100 were issued on a development contract to helicopter and non-ejection aircraft pilots flying combat missions in the Republic of Vietnam. It was deemed unsatisfactory due to being overly cumbersome and giving pilots a limp when they tried to run. The contract was never awarded to Rocket Jet Engineering Corporation and the US Air Force SRU-21P survival vest kit was selected by the US Army to replace this leg holster kit. Now, I'm gonna briefly show you a SRU-21P vest so you get an idea of what that looks like. Now this is an SRU-21P survival vest. Now that's what replaced this thing. And this was supposed to replace the Seek 2, the Survival Evasion and Escape Kit 2. We've checked that one out already. Now this, let's first start off by checking out this RT-10 radio. The ACR RT-10 radio operates at a 243 megahertz frequency, has no volume control. The on and off switch can be locked for a tone beacon, like that. This one doesn't work. The battery, it died a long time ago. Yeah, this battery is 42 years old, doesn't operate anymore. It's to be expected. I'm just surprised the battery didn't leak or anything like that. It has a 20 mile range at 1,000 feet for the beacon and 10 miles for voice. It's pretty advanced for the time and really simple. Your radio, that's the most important part of your survival kit. Being able to phone home and get picked up, that's a priority. Now that one doesn't work, but I have a PRC-90 radio right here. This came out of that SRU-21P vest. It also has a beacon. both at 243 megahertz and then also at 282 megahertz frequency. Yeah, that one still works. We'll be checking this out a little bit further along with everything else in that vest in a later video. And then next, this pocket. There are a couple things in here. There is this SDU 5E strobe light. Just on a basic lanyard, you can tie it off somewhere and you won't lose it. Light marker distress. This thing has a minimum five mile visibility and it operates underwater. Also doesn't work. The battery, it's been long dead. Oh, and it smells, actually it smells like some old cheese, which is interesting. It just really has the smell of something old and spoiled. It's just a sulfur deal. This strobe light, it might not be operational, but I do have this one, light marker distress. This also came out of that vest. You also get this survival knife. Camillus, New York, January 1967. Yeah, you could do pretty much anything with this. It's a great survival knife that's still currently produced by Ontario Knife Company. I'm not sure if Camillus still makes it, but you can still buy this thing. Get a nice little sharpening stone too. It was barely used. So there are your secondary components. All right, so let's check out the main part of the kit. So 
Survival Kit Individual Lightweight Army, Rocket Jet Engineering Corporation, and a patent number. All right, so you also get a component list. Okay, so let's take this stuff to the side. I want to show this part first. The adhesive has come off over the years. I think maybe somebody looked at everything, but you get flares, you get four flares, a flare gun, and a signal mirror. Check that out. It's one of these. It's tied to a lanyard so you don't lose it. But it has a bunch of adhesive stuck to it, like old dry adhesive. That's your signal kit personnel distress M185. Now, we're definitely gonna give that a look. Look, you get you get four flares. I'm wondering if this one either just lost its tint over the years or it could be pink, and that's red. We're not going to fire off any of these. I'm going to fire off some from a different kit, but it's the same exact flare and it's the same projector. So you get flares and a signal mirror. And it's pretty basic compared to some that I've seen and also has a lot of adhesive glue and dust on it. There we go. This is visible for miles and a signal mirror, you're gonna need it. Actually, you'd probably be looking out of this side. Scrape off as much adhesive as you can. And, yeah, it's visible for 10 miles or so. That's how you'll get seen in the daytime. Now, in a lot of situations, you don't want to be seen. They really did utilize every bit of space for purpose, like real purpose. You saw that M185 projector. See that threading? Look at this thing. This is a Teflon coated frying pan that, screw that on, boil water in it, fry fish or a snake or something. Let's roll this out. Wow. Looks like stuff has been opened up, but we'll see if it's still all there. It looks like it might be. It's where we start. This thing looks like it's half hanging out of the pack here. Look at that, a little flashlight. Does it work? No, I think the button's been depressed in and it's just, again, I'm surprised it hasn't corroded. It's for some nice low key navigation, document reading, trying to read or write a map, pretty much anything where you need a little bit of light for nighttime, but you don't want to totally let the enemy know where you're at. It doesn't take up a bunch of space. See, it just took that little bit like, this here, let's see, yeah, that stuff. Wow, yeah, that's pretty sticky. So this, yeah, everything's been opened up. Looks like somebody gave it all a look, but we'll find out if it's all there, but it looks like most of it is still there. It's reflective chalk. Now this is a great addition to a survival kit. You could write out a nice SOS signal. You could shine this light on it and it'll be a little bit reflective, that little bit right there. You know, if you've got a nighttime search party looking for you, it could mean the difference between you getting found by your fellow man and not getting found, or hopefully not getting found by the enemy, because it is like this, low key. 
those two go hand in hand. Let's see here. I don't even know where to start. How about this thing? That's still in the packaging. I don't think that's been opened up. Yeah, that's Baxitrace ointment. Just a basic antibiotic cream. And they give you a nice, you know, portion of it, a half ounce tube. That's enough to, in conjunction with, well, they give you some band-aids here. Now that's still sealed too, you can tell. So there are some band-aids. It looks like you get like maybe six of them. Old school Johnson & Johnson band-aids. Those old ones were amazing. The adhesive really stuck. Yeah, self-explanatory. You know, some, some band-aids. You got backs of trace anointment. Patch yourself up. Keep yourself from getting some, you know, little in infectious cuts. That's nice. And probably essential. Because if you crash landed, you're probably going to need to patch yourself up. Which, we'll just move on to the next first aid item. Gosh, that glue is just incredible. I'm not going to remove this. It's just a white two inch by five yard, you know, gauze compress bandage. And, you know, it's it's just a white non-camouflage bandage. We've checked the same kind out in a Seek 2. Pretty much, this is all you get for any of your real serious wounds. I think I saw a sewing kit. Actually, let's go for that next. Now this is opened. I want to be careful with this plastic packaging. I'm going to replace all of this back where it belongs. Suture yourself up with this. I see some safety pins in there. Well, I don't want to remove it too much because it's the kind of thing once you take it out you'll never really be able to get it back in if you don't put it back in correctly at least. You get some various size needles and a pretty generous amount of black thread. It looks pretty tough. And then safety pins and some cotton, which you could use that as tinder, you know, on a pinch. I'm going to put this back in the tube. There we go. Safety pins. You pull out ticks with that. You could use it to hold a bandage in place. I mean, there, there are a bunch of uses for it. I mean, that's the whole thing about survival kits. You want to maximize your space with the most multi-purpose items that you can. Now, here's another antibiotic ointment. You get two of them. This one's a small little eighth of an ounce tube of Neosporin. And you'll find this in Baxitracin probably in your medicine cabinet, you know, or your first aid kit. Neosporin, it's a triple antibiotic ointment that polymycin, zinc Baxitracin, and Neomycin sulfate. I mean, if, if you don't know what Neosporin is, you should go to the store and buy some because it's great for your first aid kit. That stuff is incredible. It'll definitely prevent infection see here actually the soap I'm gonna need this to clean up some wounds or just clean yourself up actually I wouldn't wash myself um, with this I can smell that look at that that's just a ziplock in there and with a small hole you know everything smells like a, a certain industrial glue but I can smell this dial soap Deodorant beauty soap. Round the clock protection. I would not use this soap to clean myself. Uh, I think they should have included some unscented soap. The only thing I'd use that dial soap for is cleaning out a wound. That's it. Alright, so what's this? You get three of them. You get three toothbrushes. Like a disposable toothbrush. Let's see if I can get this thing out of there. There we go. I wonder if any of these even exist anymore. Insert finger, moisten brush, and dispose. To open, peel off front and back. Devcoa Incorporated, Floral Park, New York. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm definitely not going to open it. Man, that sticky glue is really sticky. It's just like a really unique and pungent smell. Oh, wow, look. Stay awake tablets. Dextroamphetamine sulfate five milligrams you get a sheet of ten it's a generous portion that will keep you awake for a while keep you going you know in a survival situation your, your spirits are low you might be panicking you might be hungry tired and really sore and in pain something like this it'll definitely keep you in the game if you are really kind of dragging your feet you've been on the move for a couple days you're hungry 
tired and demoralized, that could definitely mean the difference between you getting captured or getting out of there. All right, and then some look to be wow you get two packs of it salt tablets which one's open and one's not let's check out the open one you get a pretty generous portion of these as well you get two sheets of ten now salt tablets they're Something that really needs to be in every survival kit, you know, especially in a tropical environment where you're sweating like crazy and keep you from getting major cramps and worse. And speaking of cramps and dehydration, this is still sealed. I'm going to keep it sealed. Anti-diarrhea tablets. Diphenoxalate hydrochloride tablets with atropine sulfate. Probably one of the last things you want in a tropical environment or really any escape and evasion situation is diarrhea. Again, losing vital electrolytes and hydration, you're just going to be sick and cramping up. Could be getting that from, you know, an insect bite, you know, getting ill from some bad water that you drank, which that would bring me to something that I can't find in the kit, and that is the water purification tablets. There's a 50 count bottle and it, it should be iodine tablets. I don't see them. Hold on one sec. Okay, here's something that's missing from the kit. This is most likely identical to the bottle that's missing out of here, and that is water purification tablets. You get 50 of them in a bottle, iodine tabs, packed by Van Brood Milling. I'll actually put these in this kit. It's just missing the plastic. So let's move to the next first aid medical item. Okay, so now this has been opened. These are painkiller tablets. Proxaphine, hydrochloride, aspirin, caffeine, and phenacetin capsules. You get five of them. Now, if you crash landed, you injured yourself, you're in a lot of pain, distracting pain, you're going to really want something like this. Definitely a nice addition to this kit. So then, some peculiar item here. Trojan ends. Controlled rubber prophylactics for those who wish a special end as a receptacle Well, they really knew how to sell this product back in the day. So you get what looks to be maybe two I can't quite tell it hasn't been opened. I'm gonna keep that sealed as well You get yeah, I think it's two prophylactics. It's it's a water receptacle that'll, that'll hold water You take a prophylactic you fill it up with water and if you have it hanging right above a fire But not so close it's gonna you know, burn and break right through the rubber. You definitely don't want to break your rubber. But if you keep it right above it, it'll actually boil the water slowly but surely you can purify your water that way. So those are very useful. Speaking of a water receptacle, there's supposed to be a large one in here that's missing. And that and the purification tablets are apparently the only things that, for, so far at least, that are not in the kit. So then, let's see, how about this? That just came right off and is not removed from the packaging. It's insect repellent and sunscreen ointment. It's a nice two-in-one usage to repel insects and prevent sun and wind burn. So you get a one ounce tube. That'll probably hold you for a while. You know, you could be out for a good bit with something like this. I mean, it's self-explanatory how useful this would be in your in a tropical environment. You know, you, you got some serious UVs, you know, and Tons of mosquitoes and other blood-sucking insects that'll keep you from getting eaten alive and burned up. So this has been opened. Okay. You always get a small pack of these. Anti-malaria tablets. Which, it's a preventative. It's a regimen you take one per week. It's chloroquine and primaquine phosphate. And you don't chew them. You, you just swallow them with water. I mean, you'll get malaria from bad water, mosquito bites, and whatnot. You know, in Vietnam, Cambodia, that's something you definitely need. And this, that's really strong industrial adhesive tape. Actually, that's still sealed. Hold on, let me go grab. I've got one that's open. Check this out. It's like duct tape. 
you get a fair amount of it. You pretty much have like a hundred different uses for a small roll of duct tape. I mean, use your imagination and pretty much, you know, you've probably nailed it for whatever usage that you might need it for. That looks like fishing line. Probably a 30 pound test, my guess. You could probably also use this for sewing with one of these needles if that's not enough thread in there. Yeah, this is open. Look at this. It's a wristwatch style compass. Couple cracks on it, but it still works. I'd put that on my wrist right away. Mosquito head net and mittens. That's also sealed. I have another one of these. I'll show you in just a moment. We'll actually open it up. Well, here's a fishing kit. Let's give this a look along with the mosquito head net and mittens. Check that out. Two little cushions keeping the hooks in place. There's some artificial bait. This right here, it'll inflate slightly once it's wet and you know, it'll look like a worm. There's a lead weight. And here's a double hook spoon. You troll this along and it's shiny. Fish like shiny things. Kind of shaped like a fish. It's perfect. If you don't have any other bait and if you lost this, if you can't find any insects or anything to use as live bait, a lizard or a frog, you got this thing. And a lot of fish are gonna go after that. And then this, you get four standard J hooks and then two fly baits, which is really nice. Look at that. And the the standard J hooks look like saltwater hooks. Yeah, and then you get small standard like freshwater J hooks. Perfect for catching just normal sized fish and there's some line this is a, these two are attached to the two fly hooks and i'm going to keep this in place because if you undo it you'll never get it back the way it is trust me i know how this stuff works and then of course you have your black line it's probably about a 30 pound test and there's your fishing kit right there And then this mosquito head net and mittens. That's the one original to this kit. It's actually packed a little bit better than this one. This one's a little more fluffy. I should take this out. Pretty much never gonna be able to get back in, but that's all right. Pretty fine mesh. It could probably protect you from noceums, along with, of course, mosquitoes and other blood sucking insects. That's really nice. Drawstring right here. This will stretch past your elbow and doesn't affect your dexterity too much. And if you need to sleep a little bit, catch a little rest, that's about the only way you're going to do it without getting eaten alive. Extremely useful. All right, so we're back. What's this? Oh, wow, those are matches. And they look like they're kind of breaking down. I'm going to let that be. Definitely gonna need these. Don't use them all in one place either. If you need to start a fire, which you really want to be careful about doing that, probably start a fire real quick to cook something and then put it out. Those might come in handy. They might also bring you um, negative attention. Starting a fire is a little bit of a, a luxury in the escape and evasion situation. All right, so what's this? 
anti-infection tablets. Now I'm not going to undo the rubber band in case it's really brittly, but you get 12 tetracycline tablets for treating infection. That goes along with your first aid and medical. I mean, you patch yourself up, take a couple of these, so whatever little wound, I mean, if you crash landed, or if you're running around in the jungle, you're probably gonna need that. Also, if you end up getting sick from something, I mean, just it could be a plain and simple illness that you pick up, some kind of bacteria, you know, you're not gonna wanna try and labor a bad cold or some infectious wound, you know, in the middle of surviving. Look at that. Get a nice whistle also on a lanyard. A piece of cotton in there. It'd be nice tinder. <whistles> Sorry. That whistle might make the difference between you getting heard and not heard. If you're trying to holler out, your voice can only travel so far. That whistle travels a lot further. Okay, so now... Look at that, a nice set of pliers. That's something you don't really see in, in many survival kits. It's just kind of a bulkier item. Yeah, again, another multi-purpose tool that has countless uses. The first one that comes to my mind, if you get a hook in a fish's mouth and it's just biting around everywhere and it's just impossible to get that hook back and it might be your last hook, you'll get it back with those pliers. Okay, so now, look at this. Kind of brittly. I want to be careful with this. It's a wire saw. Looks to be pretty heavy duty. Look at that. It's actually a nice one, really nice. You know, a lot of these are real basic and kind of cheap and flimsy. This is probably the heaviest duty wire saw I've ever seen in a survival kit. You'd be cutting down saplings with that. You could also probably use it as a weapon. So look at this, you get some bouillon cubes. They're definitely not gonna be edible anymore. Look at that. Replenish your sodium content, make you feel like you're getting some real food. If you can't catch fish or anything like that, I mean, quite frankly, I'd be taking one of those and just chewing on it. If I didn't have time to make a nice hot, you know, soup, essentially, you just eat them. So look at this. Okay, somebody already peeled this back. It was a wax-coated blade. That's a saw blade. It's threaded for your flare projector. I'm not going to twist that on too much further. It might get stuck and then this part will come off get brittly or what have you. you get a nice little saw in conjunction with your wire saw I mean they got you covered that's really nice looks like you get a second blade look at that razor knife The Seek 2 had one of these, but that one was double-sided. It was serrated and then just a standard razor. It's dull on this side. I think this is less of a efficient allocation of space, quite frankly, because they could have put both blades, you know, serration on one side, razor on the other. So now this. You'll see these in other kits. Let me keep this one folded up. Yeah, because once you refold it, it kind of gets bulkier. Look at it. It's a thick aluminum sheet metal. There's so many uses for this. It's very reflective. And you could turn it into a container to boil water, fry fish. You'd use it for reflection purposes, you know. And, you know, again, a very nice multi-purpose item. I mean, you get that frying pan, that Teflon coated frying pan part, but this is something that you could use in a pinch. And here's a candle. 
again, a candle, multi-purpose. If your flashlight broke, if you want to stretch your matches, this is really good for fire starting. If you needed to seal something with wax, you know, and there are a bunch of uses for it. Improvise and you'll, you'll sit there and you'll think, aha, there's another use for that candle. Along with this, this is some kind of tinder. Yeah, there's cotton in the center. It's like a pre-oiled tinder. Also very good for, you know, starting a fire. You're going to need that in Vietnam. I mean, everything's soaking wet. The humidity is probably 100%. And you can't just start a fire with a basic little fire starter rubbing two sticks together. You're going to need a little something extra. Look at this. This is a chamois, I believe. It's like a little sham wow which is a highly absorbent piece of fabric. I'm going to just keep that in the packaging. I mean, this thing, if you need to wipe yourself down, you got that soap and you got a little mini sponge. You clean wounds, clean cuts, clean your equipment or what have you. Wipe stuff down with this thing. I mean, you know, there's a bunch of uses for it. Look at this. That's some snare wire. Also still sealed, so we'll keep it sealed. Great for catching small game. So then look at this. You know, whole other layer of stuff over here. So there's this. Yeah, this is the solar still. Yeah, that's on the list. There's it says solar still. But it also has a bunch of survival instructions. I'll show you what all the survival instructions are looking like without having to unfold this thing. A solar still, I mean, great for getting water. That'll work really well in Vietnam. A solar still, you'll probably be getting quite a bit of water, actually. Set that thing up, start getting water other ways. This might be the safest way to get water. You don't really want to go to rivers very often. Gathering water there, probably want to dig a hole for water. Speaking of which, this looks like fishing bait, but it's actually plastic tubing. You can siphon gas out of vehicles. You can siphon water out of the ground. You dig a hole, you stick this plastic tubing in there, and you suck on it until water starts coming up. So then, look at this. That just came right off. Chili powder for when you catch a, a, a really huge catfish or something. And I'm telling you, you're going to need seasoning for that kind of stuff. Or a snake. You got a seasoned snake. And look at They give you salt and pepper. This is the coolest kit. Look at this. They even give you salt and pepper. That's insane. If you catch some raunchy, gamey meat, you know, like something that's just gonna be tasting pretty strange, you're gonna need something like this. Well, you won't need it, but you're definitely gonna want it. You get four packs of pepper. That's kind of an ample portion of pepper. Look at that. Morton Salt Company. Look at her, just doing her thing. So, Get salt and pepper. The salt, you can use it to remove leeches. You know, it's not just, I mean, basic first aid. You could use the salt for, you know, that in conjunction with your toothbrush. You could swish away and prevent your teeth from falling out if you're really out there for a long time. Oh, I'm definitely not going to fiddle with that any further. The salt's leaking. So, yeah, let's not mess with that. All right, one last item. That's also still sealed, I believe. Yes, that's still sealed. We'll keep that sealed. Look at that. All that nylon cordage. I don't know how much there is there. The list doesn't say, but nylon cord. That cordage is probably one of your most all-purpose items. I mean, you'd use it for first aid, using it for building, you know, and supporting shelter. You use it for hanging up your clothing that's soaking wet. Look at that. That's just weird seeing that empty like that. Definitely be replacing everything back in. I think it was just only missing 
the water receptacle and not the prophylactics that's your backup water receptacle there's a larger i think it holds like a liter it's a plastic you know ziploc style water container that that's missing Not many of these floating around still, that's for sure. All right, so there we go, the M185 projector. You get your four flares, now let's test two of these out. Signal kit, personnel distress, M185 projector, and two red signal flares. Flare, distress, red. Penguin Industries. All right, so let's do one at dawn. Nice. All right, so let's get everything replaced back inside. Let's roll this up. Here it is. That took like 10 minutes to put back in properly. There we go. Holster survival kit, individual lightweight army. Made by Rocket Jet Engineering Corporation, 1967. What an awesome opportunity to be able to check something like this out. The leg holster survival kit. That's something you don't see every day. Probably you'll never see it again on film. Just something that sitting in a few different collections. This one, I'm gonna donate somewhere. I just gotta find the right place. Well, anyway, this is Steve1989. I hope you liked the video. And I'll be coming back at you with something new. Or old. All right, cool. See ya.